Considering the scope of superhero comics, it was always going to be the case that new supervillains constantly had to increase in power to remain a credible threat. However, sometimes this idea can go a little too far, with big bads racking up a moveset that would make even the most invulnerable of heroes nervous. While every villain has to try and one-up each other to stay menacing, there are some villains that come along just to throw out the rulebook altogether. The kind of bad guy who demands a response so great, so fierce, that it can only be chronicled in a 399 weekly event comic that encroaches onto every last vestige of the universe they're currently obliterating. Because of that it can get silly at times, but when the threat level's this big, who can refuse a hefty dose of fun in their funny books? I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most stupidly overpowered supervillains in comics history. Number 10, Darkseed. Darkseid? Darkseed? Darkseed. Truly Darkseed. Number 10. Darkseed. Lord of Apocalypse and father to Orion, Darkseed has worked his way through more universe-conquering plots than Batman has through Robins, and despite the fact that he's been bested, eventually, on every occasion, each and every time he's returned, the threat level has inevitably increased. Nowhere is this best displayed than in 2008's Final Crisis. The crisis to end all crises. Grant Morrison's epic tale of new gods and cosmic vampires intimated the scale of the threat posed by Darkseed in its very opening. Orion, a new god from Kirby's fourth world, is murdered. And it turns out that Darkseed himself had actually manifested in the body of an unassuming human. Once he returns, the rest of the comic is just beyond crazy, putting it bluntly. Batman gets killed trying to take him down, and numerous heroes fall to the anti-life equation before the tides are turned by Superman late on. As far as DC villains go, not many get bigger or scarier than he. Number 9. Thanos Although Thanos has had to deal with his fair share of humiliating defeats over the years, he's still widely considered to be the worst of the worst when it comes to Marvel villains, at least when he gets his hands on the Infinity Gauntlet anyway. In fact, no one storyline conveys the threat more diligently than Jim Starlin and George Perez's Infinity Gauntlet, where Thanos, in his efforts to win Death's affections, literally wipes out half of the sentient life within the Marvel Universe. He's bested in the end, but only when a being of higher ability betrays the Titan. Having been granted complete and total omniscience and omnipotence, Thanos was able to command godlike powers and bend reality on a whim, ending the lives of iconic superheroes in an instant, even if it was only temporary. He might not have been able to reach such heights since, owing to a distinct lack of gauntlet in his life, but that act alone ensures that he's one of the most dastardly and powerful Marvel villains ever. Number 8. Brainiac a malicious piece of artificial intelligence hell-bent on obtaining all the knowledge in the universe and then destroying it, Brainiac has tangled with Superman in the Justice League on plenty of occasions. Telepathic and telekinetic, Brainiac's powers allow him to manipulate and obliterate whatever he chooses. And considering just how many worlds he's destroyed, it's fair to say that this moveset has served him pretty well. Fans of Justice League Unlimited will no doubt remember the character's defining appearance in that cartoon, where he possesses Lex Luthor and proceeds to wipe the floor with the entire league. So great is his threat that, with no other option, Flash is forced to enter the speed force to destroy him, nearly dying in the process. While he might not look all that intimidating on the surface, Brainiac is almost as strong as it gets when it comes to Superman's rogues. Number 7. Doomsday. Unlike most of DC's deadliest villains, there's really not all that much to Doomsday bar his powers. I mean, he was literally made with the sole intention to kill Superman, and lo and behold, he actually did. This moment came in 1993's The Death of Superman, and it sent shockwaves around the world when it was first published. It's telling, however, that Doomsday has struggled to find relevance ever since. A footnote in 2016's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, where again, all he does is show up and kill Superman. Spoilers. The character's whole reason to exist is to best the Man of Steel, and placing him in other contexts never seems to work out. That did, of course, mean that the character was granted a daft amount of power at his first appearance. Superman was, even in his post-crisis form, the most powerful living being in the DC Universe. So to have Doomsday kill him, even if it did come at a great cost to his own well-being, proves that he's fairly ridiculous. Number 6. The Anti-Monitor 
conceptualized as a means of streamlining the DC universe and eliminating continuity errors in characters who'd fallen out of the public's favor, Marv Wolfman and George Perez's Crisis on Infinite Earths, which is the best goddamn title in the world by the way, set about doing just that with the creation of the Anti-Monitor, a being so great he could destroy entire realities. A being opposed to all of creation and determined to rule over it, the character quite literally erased decades of classic comic book storylines, killing powers, entire Earths, and even Barry Allen's Flash before all was said and done. The DC Universe is yet to relive an event as climactic or indeed as impactful as that first crisis, which is probably a good thing, considering how much damage the Anti-Monitor was able to cause. Number 5. Annihilus. One thing you definitely can't say about Marvel is that they're lacking in the cosmic department, but it's the villains in this realm in particular that manage to turn the most heads. One of the cosmic evildoers in question is Annihilus, the being responsible for the infamous Annihilation Wave that wiped out a bunch of Marvel's sci-fi properties back in 2005. The threat was so great that pretty much every cosmic Marvel hero had to band together to take him down, and considering how powerful the likes of the Silver Surfer are alone, that's a pretty big deal. Although he would be bested by Galactus in the end, Annihilus and his horde initiated a murderous campaign that would last close to three years. While that might speak more to scheduling issues than any base level threat, it is true that only a staggering coalition of heroes could match the might of the big bad. Number 4. Galactus no collection of the medium's most terrifyingly powerful villains would be complete without the Destroyer of Worlds. Since its introduction in 1966, Galactus has made a name for himself as one of the Fantastic Four's most powerful antagonists, and indeed, one of the most destructive forces in the entire Marvel Universe. Although the character has more defeats to his name than victories at this point, Galactus always commands the world's attention when he's around. Most of the time it's because he's about to eat it, but still. Feed him, and he'll be chill for a good few days, as was the case when Squirrel Girl rolled out the red carpet for his return. But the force of nature can still be relentless when he's on a rampage. Sure, his value might have diminished over the last 10 years or so, owed in part to that dreadful cloud-like appearance in Fantastic Four 2 and the heavy proliferation of other cosmic bad guys. But as far as villains do go, they rarely get any more influential or iconic as Galactus. Number 3. Amazo Amazo might just look like yet another evil android, but there's so much more to him than the metallic exterior would imply. Created by Professor Ivo as a means of attaining immortality, Amazo possesses the ability to analyze and attain the powers and abilities of any hero he faces. Further to that is the ability to retain knowledge of the abilities he's absorbed, so if he were to face, say, the entire Justice League, his power would grow exponentially. This presents a really interesting dynamic in that it's actually beneficial for heroes to face him one on one, rather than as a team. Literally no one wants to come up against a villain with the tactical know-how of Batman, the strength of Superman, or the speed of Flash all rolled into one, because, you know, they lose every single time. Number 2. Apocalypse Undeniably the baddest of the bad when it comes to the X-Men universe, Apocalypse is, as you could probably tell by the name, the harbinger of the end times. A mutant so ancient and so powerful that, not through lack of trying, is almost impossible to defeat. Film audience were given a taste of said power in X-Men Apocalypse, and while Oscar Isaac's prosthetics probably didn't do enough to convey just how dangerous a being he is in the comics, it's telling that the character's only recently gotten the big screen treatment. For instance, the character is so powerful that the X-Men have had to resort to extreme measures to eliminate him. In the Uncanny X-Force, the Black Ops team, led by Wolverine, were tasked with assassinating the being while recovering in a childlike state. Despite being in his infant at this stage, the team, spearheaded by Phantom X, terminate him with extreme prejudice, lest he return more powerful than ever before. Quite dastardly for a group of heroes if you ask me, but it was an act that was more than justified. Number 1. Professor Zoom You'd struggle to find a villain more influential in the DC Universe than Eobard Thorne, at least within the last decade or so. The arch enemy of the Flash, the Barry Allen version, Thorne possesses all the powers that his non-reverse counterpart does, except with a villainous demeanor to make them seem all the more terrifying. He can hop through time, cross dimensions, manipulate metal, and even alter the very essence of someone's personality. 
A villain to both people on the page and off, Zoom was responsible for DC's much maligned 2011 continuity reboot, and has even had a part to play in the Doomsday Clock, a book which is currently bringing Alan Moore's Watchmen into the mainstream DC universe. There are few villains out there able to mess with the fabric of reality as much as he can, and considering how often continuity resets can upset heroes and readers alike, it's a pretty ridiculous trait to have. So leave us alone, Eobard. Go mess with some other timeline. Go on then. Um, yeah, well done for making it to the end of that video, guys. We're both very proud of you. Um, you can subscribe as always beneath me. Um, to my left, there are a few other videos that you might fancy watching. To our right, there are a few other channels like uh, around this way um, that you can also click on if you fancied that. And um, 